it's good to be here today. Uh, my name is uh, Pavel Begun, and uh, I'm with 3G Capital in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I'm here today to tell you about one of our favorite investment ideas. Uh, before I do so, I'd like to tell you uh, a bit about uh, 3G Capital. Uh, first off, some disclosures. Hopefully you can speed read. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you must be done by now, I can, I can hear that. Uh, so 3G Capital is a value-oriented investment partnership that seeks to invest in high-quality publicly traded businesses around the world. Uh, our investment approach is best described by seeking for good businesses run by good management teams and available at a good price. Uh, I realize that this is probably as generic of a description as it gets, <laughs> so I'd like to emphasize that our definition of good business and good price is going to be fairly different from that of most other investors, uh, and I will give you more details on uh, the following slide. We've been in business since 2004, and uh, in the course of our existence, we produced a, a track record of significant outperformance uh, versus both uh, MSCI World and uh, the S&P 500. Uh, so now as promised, here's more detail about uh, our definitions for good business, uh, good management and good price. Uh, more specifically, uh, when we say good business, uh, what we'd like to buy, would like to buy businesses that are leaders in industries with a track record of uh, competitive longevity. In other words, uh, we'd like to invest in industries where number ones and number twos tend to stay in the lead for extended periods of time, such as uh, 10, 15, 20 years as this gives us assurance that a business that we pick will maintain its competitive advantage over the long term. Uh, further, we'd like those businesses to have uh, a solid financial condition, which we define as uh, debt payback of uh, two years or less, uh, and we'd like those businesses to generate returns on capital of at least 15% or higher. When it comes to management teams, uh, We'd like to see a track record of uh, skillful operating ability, and uh, we'd like to see a track record of uh, intelligent capital allocation over the long term. Further, we'd like to see those manage management teams have the proper set of in incentives. Uh, now, when it comes to price, uh, we normally look to buy those good businesses uh, at below uh, 8 to 11 times earnings. Uh, historically, uh, in the past five years, we managed to buy businesses at prices that are much lower, and uh, our current look-through P ratio for the entire portfolio is about six times with a corresponding dividend yield of uh, about 5%. Uh, so now I'd like to talk to you the about, the, uh, about the investment idea. Uh, the investment idea is uh, Turkey Health Bank Cassie, also known as Health Bank. Uh, it's a Turkish bank. Uh, it was founded back in uh, 1938 to serve the needs of artisans and tradesmen. Uh, Health Bank is a member of uh, the Turkish so called Big Seven oligopoly. Uh, which is a collection of largest and most prominent Turkish banks, which collectively control about 75% of the Turkish banking market. Uh, the company has a dominant position uh, in service in small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, it makes money in an old-fashioned uh, in an old-fashioned way, i.e., by taking in deposits and lending them out, as opposed to involving. Uh, high-risk activities such as uh, derivatives trading and the like. Uh, the business is uh, conservatively financed and uh, well capitalized. Uh, at the moment, Health Bank is selling at a significant discount to the underlying private market value. Uh, now I know there's always this debate in the value investing community as to whether it's better to buy 
a good business at a fair price, or a fair business at a good price. Uh, the good thing about Health Bank is that you don't really need to engage in that debate because uh, it is essentially a good business selling at a good price. Uh, so now let's go through the uh, three G's, uh, good business, good management, good price, so that uh, we can see whether Health Bank qualifies as a good investment on uh, that basis. Uh, if you were to look at, at the valuation from a uh, price to book perspective, which for financials, uh, generally that, that's the way uh, you would want to look at it, uh, you see that Health Bank is currently selling for about uh, uh, half, half its book value. Uh, if you look at the past 10 years, Health Bank traded anywhere between 1.4 times book and uh, 1.8 times book. You can also look at uh, the current valuations in the big seven in Turkey. Uh, on average, uh, big seven banks in Turkey are currently traded at 1.1 times book. Uh, and another angle would be to look at uh, private uh, market transactions in the Turkish banking sector. Uh, the recent private market transactions took place uh, at a decent premium to book. Uh, there were like two or three transactions in the past year and a half uh, they took place at anywhere between like 1.2 times book to 1.5 times book. Uh, importantly, those transactions involved tier two and tier three banks uh, whose competitive position and whose profitability uh, was inferior to that of Health Bank. Uh, if you want to look at it from a uh, price to earnings perspective, if you just take a look at the actual earnings numbers, you're looking at the P of uh, four times, However, currently, uh, Health Bank is probably under-earning due to the fact that uh, Turkey is, uh, is in a recession right now. If you were to normalize those earnings to reflect more of a mid-cycle number, uh, you'd be looking at uh, three times earnings. Uh, so now I would like to uh, review the business part of things so that we can establish whether Health Bank uh, enjoys a good competitive position in its marketplace. Uh, so, basically, if you look at uh, the banking market in Turkey and uh, Health Bank position within that market, uh, you see that Health Bank is uh, uh, one of the big seven, which is a Turkish banking oligopoly uh, that controls about 75% uh, of uh, the deposits in Turkey. Uh, essentially, there is a balance of power within that tightly regulated oligopoly, such that all the banks within that oligopoly enjoy similarly solid competitive positions, and they also enjoy similarly good profitability metrics. Now, even though uh, they're all fairly comparable within the big seven, Health Bank is gonna be one of uh, the leaders in the pack due to the fact that uh, they have a uh, number one position in servicing small and medium-sized businesses. And uh, as a result, Health Bank enjoys a very stable and low-cost deposit base, which serves as a bedrock of the company's competitive advantage. Uh, they simply get uh, deposit, which is the raw materials of banking, at, at a cost that is lower than that of the rest of the banks. Of course, in banking, uh, just getting low-cost deposits is not enough. You need to put those deposits to work in a sense-making fashion, and uh, this is what Health Bank actually does. Uh, as such, they complement their uh, core deposit advantage with conservative underwriting. Uh, if you look at uh, the breakdown of the bank's loan book, uh, you see that about half, half the book is uh, loans to SMEs, uh, in which the bank has uh, decades of expertise. Uh, furthermore, uh, about a third of those loans are guaranteed by the Turkish government pursuant to the exclusive relationship that the bank has with uh, the state. Further, if you look at uh, retail loans, uh, you see that uh, about half the loans outside of mortgages are going to be either to retirees who enjoy a steady government paycheck uh, or uh, lend out on a payroll basis, meaning that uh, 
help bank gets to withhold the payments uh, straight from the paycheck. So uh, they get to take money away from uh, the borrowers before the borrowers can, can buy uh, bread and milk. So if you combine help banks low cost deposit advantage with the conservative underwriting philosophy, what you see is that health bank generates a very good profitability in a low risk manner. So here you see a chart uh, with the comparison of uh, health bank's performance uh, and risk metrics with respect to the big seven and also with respect to Turkey's tier two banks and uh, Turkey's uh, tier three banks. So clearly they uh, do quite a bit better than, than others. Uh, I believe that performance is likely to continue going forward because if you examine the history of banking franchises around the world, what you see is that for tightly regulated banking oligopolies, you have something called competitive longevity. So those oligopolies, they stay stable for extended periods of time. So it is likely we're going to see the same result here in Turkey with the big seven. Furthermore, uh, two more boxes to check on the goods business front. Uh, I'd like to examine the financial condition first, uh, looking at uh, the bank's capital ratio. Uh, it's uh, about 14% versus the regulatory minimum of eight to 10 and a half as per Basel III. So clearly uh, they're much better capitalized than, than uh, average. If you look at uh, their loan to deposit ratio, which is a critical metric in the banking sector, uh, they have the loan to deposit ratio of uh, 100%, meaning that their loans are uh, fully covered by deposits, uh, which is uh, uh, a fairly safe level. Uh, further, if you look at uh, historical return on returns on equity for Hell Bank, uh, they were in the range of uh, 18 to 20% in the past 10 years. Uh, so obviously, uh, it's a uh, high quality business based on that metric. Uh, the other aspect of business I'd like to cover is uh, growth. Uh, due to the fact that Halbank has uh, a significant competitive advantage in the Turkish banking space, they managed to demonstrate above average growth historically. So if you look at the past 10 years, Halbank was able to grow its book value in US dollar terms, i.e. FX adjusted, of 10% per annum. Uh, I don't expect the bank to grow that fast going forward, uh, obviously because uh, it's a much larger institution now, so uh, not as low a base, but I think they'll still define for a few reasons. Uh, first off, if you look at uh, the Turkish banking services sector, it's really underpenetrated compared to developed markets. Its penetration level is about half that of the developed world. So uh, there's clearly some growth potential in that respect. Uh, furthermore, if you look at uh, the management of Health Bank, they managed to develop complementary income streams over time, such as treasury management services, payment processing, credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. And the bank is able to grow those complementary income streams at a 15% clip. So this will definitely augment the bank's ability to grow going forward. Uh, up next, I will uh, grade health banks management with respect to their capital allocation abilities and with respect to their uh, operator skill. Uh, the way we do it is we just look at uh, the long-term track record of the management team. Uh, if you examine the long-term track record of the management team when it comes to operations, uh, I think you can uh, give them an A uh, because they have a track record of growing book value, which is a good pro proxy for uh, intrinsic value in the banking business. So they've grown that book value at an above average pace and they've done it in, in a low risk manner. By the numbers, they managed to triple their book value over the past 10 years in US dollar terms. 
and they've done it while maintaining the loan loss ratio 40% below that of the other big seven banks. Clearly that indicates that uh, the management team are good operators. Uh, furthermore, they didn't necessarily stretch to get the growth, because if you look at their historical funding profile, they maintain a very conservative loan to deposit ratio. They remain well capitalized at all times. Uh, and furthermore, they managed to augment growth by developing complementary income streams. And they've grown those complementary income streams at a pace that is double that of the industry. On the capital allocation front, uh, looking at their track record, what you see is management teams staying within their core competency, which is traditional Turkish banking. Uh, they did not uh, venture outside their core markets. They did not venture any high-risk activities. And uh, they reinvested most of the cash that they earned back into the business at 15 to 20% rates, uh, which was probably the most intelligent thing to do. And whatever excess cash they had, they sent it back to the shareholders via dividends. Uh, so that covers the management piece. Uh, now, no discussion of an investment case is ever complete without reviewing the potential risks. So there are a few risk items that I'd like to uh, discuss. Uh, first off, we have uh, currency risk. Uh, I would say that for a long-term investor in the Turkish banking sector, currency risk is really minimal. Uh, the reason that I say it is because Turkey, as are many other emerging markets, is a highly dollarized economy. So anytime you have significant depreciation, it also causes significant inflation over time. So what it does that inflation basically raises all the assets across the banking system over three to five years uh, to the pre-depreciation dollar equivalent. So as a dollar-based investor, over a three to five year period, uh, you don't really uh, uh, incur any currency risk. Furthermore, uh, there is a specter of political risk given the fact that Health Bank is majority owned by the Turkish government. I know that generally, political risk and government ownership is seen to be uh, correlated, and there is this negative connotation about uh, being a state-owned enterprise. However, I'd say sometimes there are positives that come with it, and there is a positive in case of Health Bank, um, because in an emerging market setting, what happens is, if you buy a business that is owned by private interests, there is always a risk that this private interest gets embroiled in some kind of controversy over political affiliations with the state, and that could spell doom for the minority shareholders. So to the extent that you do not have private interest control in the bank, and you have the state control in the bank, this is not a risk. Uh, so there's also a risk that the government, uh, through its ownership, may push the bank to make loans that are uneconomic in nature. Uh, I've seen it in the past with some businesses. I don't believe it's a significant risk here uh, because the government of Turkey knows well enough that its holding power is dependent on the stability of the financial system. So I think they'd be reluctant to push a major financial institution such as Health Bank uh, to engage in an uneconomic activity on a significant scale. Furthermore, uh, the government said that this bank will eventually get privatized, and if you want to get top dollar for the bank, which I'm sure the government of Turkey wants, wants to get, uh, you better have clean operating history. Uh, and if you look at the numbers, uh, what you see is that public sector constitutes only about 3% of uh, total loans, so uh, it does seem like uh, the state of Turkey is uh, not really uh, getting involved in uh, pushing the bank to uh, do things that are uneconomic in nature and they pretty much avoid uh, significant meddling. So uh, quick summary, you have a uh, simple high quality business in an, in an industry 
with long-term track record of success continuity. You have a management team that is willing to share the spoils with the shareholders. And you have a price, which is a cigar butt-like price. Now, of course, there are certain risks, but they're more than absorbed by the significant margin of safety. So even if some of those risks do come to pass, you will likely do well. And if they don't, uh, you will do very well. So that concludes my presentation. Hopefully I didn't put you guys to sleep. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, take some questions. Yep. I'm expecting some tough ones, hopefully. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm sure you're very aware of the involvement of the Turkish government in business. And yes. Yeah. Uh, but to a degree that they strip assets publicly just because a certain individual is uh, with the opposition and so on, like what happened in Asia Bank and so on. Right. <laughs> what can in addition to that, the direction of the bank itself giving loans to certain uh, corporates versus other. In addition to the latest uh, Iran linkage of the bank that caused the share to take a significant hit. So would you like to talk about that because this is a major, major issue? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I think there were two questions. There was one question about the government meddling because uh, there are political affiliations, and you specifically cited the Asia Bank, and then there was a question about uh, the Iran link, so I'll cover both. So uh, uh, I was actually hoping somebody was going to ask me that, so thank you. <laughs> so uh, just to give you some brief background of the Asia Bank, uh, it's a bank in Turkey controlled by private interests. So what ended up happening is that uh, the private interest that uh, controlled Asia was affiliated with, uh, uh, or supposedly affiliated with the person who was, uh, I guess, who got engaged in a standoff with the Turkish government. And uh, as a result of that, Asia Bank uh, suffered mightily, you know, ended up getting delisted. So I think as a minority of shareholders, uh, you face some significant negative consequences. And, and uh, that's why I specifically singled out the fact that in a place like Turkey, having government ownership is probably a positive in some ways because it's not like the government, in Tur of government of Turkey is going to get into political controversy with government of Turkey. So if I had private interest control in Health Bank, I'd be concerned that uh, you could repeat the fate of Asia. But now you have the government control in the bank. There is really a risk of that is, is minimal. So uh, there is also uh, a link to uh, Iran, because uh, one of the people uh, who uh, works for Health Bank got implicated uh, in a uh, situation with the US government, whereby uh, the allegation is that uh, uh, supposedly they helped uh, uh, Iran to get around some of the sanctions, uh, and the person I'm talking about is uh, uh, Mahmoud Hakanatila. Uh, he is the deputy GM of uh, the company's international division. Uh, he got uh, arrested in JFK Airport on Monday. Uh, so, uh, but uh, as far as I can tell, this is a matter that specifically concerns him, not Bank. So, if you look at the uh, uh, complaint filed by the DOJ, the Department of Justice. Uh, Health Bank name is nowhere near that complaint, so they don't mention it. They uh, make it clear that the complaint has to do with the individual and not the bank. Now, if you want to be, I guess, a nervous Nelly that I am, you're going to say, well, you know what? So yeah, it's about the individual, not the bank. Well. What if, what if it becomes about the bank at some point? Like, what's my downside here? Uh, so there is some case law here. And uh, if you look at uh, some German banks and some French banks that got implicated in uh, similar activity, they ended up uh, paying fines that amounted to about uh, 2 to 3% of their book value. So uh, nothing material 
Uh, and again, you have to keep it in context that those French and German banks, they had significant operations in the US. So that's, that's why those fines were significantly higher than they would be for uh, a bank like Hell Bank that doesn't really have any significant presence uh, in the United States. Uh, so does that answer your question? I guess it does, okay. But yeah, thanks again. I, like I said, I was hoping somebody was going to give me a chance to speak about it. Anybody else? Go ahead. Thanks for that, Pavel. Um, just a question about the, the pricing. It seems to stand out versus all the other banks that are closer to book, and this one's trading at closer to half book. Does, is there any, do you have any feeling for why that might be? Um, you know what, there, there is really nothing specific. Uh, well, actually, no, I, I, I think there is. Uh, I think there are more sellers than buyers. <laughs> but, but, but on a serious note, uh, there are a few things. Uh, number one, I think uh, it's a bank that's controlled by the state. And uh, as of right now, people feel, about, uh, feel uneasy about uh, state ownership because they think it comes with uh, a degree of political risk. So maybe that, that's part of it. Uh, I think that that's you know, the explanation. Maybe it's a, you know, a little less liquid and then, than some of the other Turkish banks. Uh, but uh, other than that, really nothing uh, sticks out. Well, thank you very much for your idea and your presentation. Sure, you're welcome. Um, I have two questions, please. Um, as you have been talking, the investing in Turkey is pretty much a macro and political story. And in this sense, um, one of the main currency risks, as you know, is, that, uh, is the balance sheet risk, in the sense that banks uh, have uh, a lot of um, liabilities in US dollars. So my first question is, uh, do we know which part of the, these bank liabilities are in US dollars? And my second question is, um, nowadays I can buy a Turkish government bond, two-year government bond at about, I know, about 9% uh, return. Um, so what's your expected return on this, on this um, stock? Because uh, maybe, um, buying a government bond is, uh, has much lower uh, operational risk and much lower uh, political risk. So um, I would like to know your expected return in order to, to, in order to compare it with the uh, government bond return. Thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm not going to be able to give you the uh, expected return to the 10th uh, decimal point, but you know, if, if you want to sort of do a quick back of the envelope calculation, uh, I think, you know, like a Turkish bank in a private like that is probably worth one and a half times book uh, in the private market. Again, like I said, if you look at uh, private transactions over the past year and a half uh, for tier two and tier three banks, they all took place at like 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 times book. So I think that would be uh, a fairly conservative assessment. So right now you're selling for uh, half book. So you can sort of uh, decide for yourself what the return potential is, uh, while keeping in mind that the value of the business is not static. So you're probably going to get, I don't know, 5 to 10% growth in book value going forward. So to the extent that you need to wait for a couple of years, or three years, or five years, for uh, the market to assign the proper valuation to Health Bank, well, there is going to be a catch-up in value. Uh, so that, does that answer the second question? OK. And the first question was about the currency risk? Right, right. So I don't think they have any uh, significant US dollar borrowing. So they have some US dollar deposits, and they have some US dollar loans. But the loan to deposit ratio for US dollars is 100%. So they don't really make any currency bet one way or the other. So like there is a full match of assets versus liabilities on the US dollar side. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you.